Let's begin our look into the preferences within Ableton Live by looking specifically at the audio preferences. Now, if you're following along and you have access to the project files, please go ahead and open up Funky Jam. Let's press our tab key to toggle over into session view and then double click on F Drums 01. Now this is going to open up a view for us of a parameter we'll want to look at in just a second. Now let's go and take a look at our preferences. Come up to the top left, click on Live, then click on Preferences, then down the tabs on the left to make sure that you've clicked on the Audio Preference tab here. Now some of these preferences we've already talked about in section 1401, the configuring inputs and tracks. But let's talk about the rest of these audio preferences. First we have the main sampling rate here and this toggles according to your audio interface's capabilities. Currently I have my Motu 828 ready to go and if I click and hold we see a wide variety of sample rates are available. Now let's go back and change this to the default Mac inputs and outputs. And now check out our input output sampling rate. And so these are the potentials from using the built-in audio within the Mac. Now basically we have two classes of numbers. 44,100 is basically for CD and 48,000 is basically for DVD audio. So if you're headed toward a CD you might want to work in 44,100 or any multiples thereof. Let's go back to the 828 so we can see those. And notice it refreshes right away. So we get 44,100, 88,200, or 176,400 for CD. And then the DVD and its multiples, 48,000, 96,000, and 192,000. Now this next setting is talking about your default sampling rate and pitch conversion. So if you bring a new audio file into a clip or into the arrange window, do you want the sample rate and pitch conversion to be normal or high? Now that's relating to this preference right here in the sample box. We can turn high Q on and off here. So this is saying, back to my preferences now, that when I bring in a new clip, do I want it by default to have that high Q on or off? Below that we have settings for latency, and that's basically our buffer size. Now as we make this smaller, it means that the passing of audio in and out of the computer back to the listener becomes much shorter. And this is particularly true for people listening in headphones to try and sing along with the track. So really what we're up against though is we make these sampling buffer size smaller. That means that the computer has to work harder at getting the audio processed in and out. As we make it larger, the computer can work more comfortably. But as you can see, it increases our delay. So as we do this, you can check in Ableton Live to see how much of a load you've got. Let's look at how that works. So now I've got the buffers at 440 samples. Before you turn the test tone on, bring it down to about 52 or something and turn it on and you're going to hear a note. I've just made sure it was soft. I'll bring that up some. Now as we start lowering the buffer size, we'll see the computer start working harder. Now if you'll follow up here in the upper right hand screen, it's telling my using about 50% of my computer's brain power when I set my buffer size this small and set about imaginary 50% usage. So if I want to say, let's say I was working my system hard like 75 or 70%, then I can start decreasing my buffer and see when I'm going to get in trouble. Click and hold and pull down stop and listen, come down again. Now you notice when we get down here we start getting some problems. Now you can change this setting according to whether you're working building songs or whether you're actually working in terms of live and using Ableton Live in a live situation for a crowd or something. So if you're in a studio you can go ahead and set this higher and feel safe and deal with the latency or leave it lower and have snappier response. You have driver error compensation which helps you compensate for your software's latency also. If you want to know more about that, there's a complete lesson in the built-in lessons within Ableton Live. 
This calculates all the latency coming in, going out, and driver error latency. Again, this is just a test tone we can use to check out Ableton's Live's load. Okay, next we'll take a look at our MIDI preferences.